as any 90s kid can attest. There really was never quite something as culturally impactful as Pokemon was for my generation.
some stuff falling out. I have featured this in another video. These are the directions for playing the game. I did a... I read through these for a video, so I've learned a little bit about how to play, but... Okay. So, let's get into this. This is... as we look at these that uh, the quality on these cards the condition um, it's not anything special I, I used my cards a lot I never intended to keep them for collecting in terms of like reselling them as a kid you just you don't think about that had I been just a few years older when Pokemon came out I might have thought more like that and held on to them and took care of them I didn't think of it that way. Um, so this is a first edition Ivysaur. And uh, I don't know if there's a name for having the thinner HP numbers. And I'll show you what I mean. But the HP is darker and thinner than other cards. That's brighter. It's called a shadowless or something. I I don't know. Um, I I've watched a few YouTubers kind of talk about some of the old cards, but I don't remember. I do know there's a distinction to be made between those two, but I don't remember exactly what it is. Okay, so now something I did with every holographic card I possibly could was you put them in these little sleeves to protect them. And uh, as you can see here, we've got a Venusaur from 2002. So it's not an original, unfortunately. It's from whatever set this is. And uh, I just love the old holographics in Pokemon. The new stuff's a bit over the top in my opinion. I like the old stuff. As far as the condition goes, I mean, it's in pretty decent condition. Probably because it was one of the last cards that I got, but it's still not in the type of condition 
haunt me was uh, very early on I remember going to a local um, a local toy store called KB Toys and me and my brother both rushed the counter and grabbed a pack well right when I grabbed a pack my brother took it out of my hands and then I grabbed another pack didn't think anything of it at first because whatever you don't know what's in the bags but when we got to the car and opened our packs up my brother's pack had a first edition charizard in it the the, the pen ultimate 
cosmic card, the creme de la creme card, whatever you want to call it. Um, my pack contained a Clefairy doll, which we'll get to later, but it's the saddest card ever. And I already had like four of them. I was so pissed off and emotional about that. I remember throwing my cards on the parking lot and uh, I didn't want them. And my brother had this first edition Charizard. Now, the sad part is that I've kept most of my cards. My brother lost his entire collection, including that first edition Charizard. And if only we had that card still, I mean, I wouldn't have it now. I probably would have sold it in 2020 um, for some exorbitant amount of money. Because I remember back in 2020, prices of those Charizards were through the roof. And man, do I wish I still had mine. I guess I probably wouldn't have kept it in the best condition, though, so maybe I shouldn't be so sad. Anyways, so then there's Squirtle. Good old Squirtle. Uh, very popular Pokemon as well. A lot of people argue between Charmander and Squirtle as being the best starter. And don't show a lot of love for Bulbasaur. I can't speak for, for either. But I remember picking uh, Squirtle in the video game. There's War Turtle, of course, when he evolves into War Turtle. Three feet, three inches tall, 50 pounds. Um, I always chose Squirtle when I played Pokemon Red. a second edition version. Same card, of course, just came out a couple years later, I think. And then an actual OG card I have. On the other side of the Venusaur is the Blastoise. And uh, as you can see, sell this for anything but that's okay because I love having it it's just a nice card it's covered in scratches the back has problems but uh gotta love Blastoise for sure okay well that does it for our starter Pokemon let's keep it moving now, I don't have every single Pokemon, um, but so far we're, we're doing well. We have one through nine. Caterpie is number ten, technically. So I think everyone and their mother probably has one or two Caterpies sitting somewhere. this particular one um and that's after giving away a bunch of them uh they just they basically came in every dang pack i'm actually gonna put this one in the front because it is the uh if it's i'm gonna call it shadowless although it may not be it may not be what that's referring to um but yeah there he is it's a great card it looks good i like the art a card we got a lot. And then at one point, the art style started taking a tumble. Um, I think this is just a toy in the grass, and uh, I did not like these, these cards that much. I don't know why they would go with a toy in the grass, it doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense to me. But, uh, hey, that's all right. It is what it is. I also have quite a few Metapods who really can't do much damage, but has a lot of 
HP. Just meant to sort of toughen up and deal with the pain. But uh, good old Metapod. Pretty dinged up. This one's got Play Doh or something on it. I don't know. It's been there for 20 years. I have no idea what it is. And then we've got the Metapod from this series.
Pidgeot. Sorry, Pidgeot was the second stage. Pidgeot. My poorly scratched Pidgeot is the third stage. And they're both considered stars. Both rare. Now this one's from the jungle set, so it is a completely different set, but still. set to be just the main set, then the jungle and the fossil. 
Those are the three I really know and remember. Okay. Now Dark Arbok, Team Rocket. I like this one a lot. Let's see if I can get this out of here. Pretty clean card. about that. I must have uh, treated this one right. It's a little dinged up on the edges, but it's one of the better conditions I probably have. Okay, that was number 24, which leads us to
I don't like them. I think it's over the top and just defeats the purpose of holographic. Um, this card, unfortunately, is a creased. But, uh, yeah. Dark right shoe. I guess. And that would be number 26. Is Sancho 27? I don't know. Um, 
<clears throat> I used to have a first edition Nidoking. This is obviously not it. Um, it was the next one in this original set. And I was stupid enough to put it in the washing machine. So when I got it out of the dryer, the card just split into half, in two halves. You had the front half with the picture and the back half of the card with the Pokemon stuff on it. And it just was a dried out, crispy mess. And I loved that card. I don't know why it was in my pocket, but I loved it. And to see it get washed was pretty depressing. Now, I also really like this card. I think this is a great looking to me this is considered a more modern card 2002 love it okay now here's a Pokemon I have some problems with not because of the Pokemon itself but because of the Clefairy doll It's better than the original. I've got a couple of light wiggly 
everyone's least favorite Pokemon. Rocket sets have become very, very uh, sought after, I think, in recent years. Um, Oddish is a pretty cool Pokemon. Very innocent. Probably doesn't pose much of a threat, but I've always liked Oddish. First edition one here. I remember getting my first jungle pack, and Oddish was the first card I ever saw. First edition Team Rocket Oddish as well. And, uh, yeah, this card's whatever, I guess. No hate for it. I like the art. Okay. So, Oddish was number 43. Oh, we're not done with Oddish. Not even close. That's called, but this is my least favorite modish card by a thousand miles. Uh, just not for me. When I look at this card, I see a sunshine with sunglasses and a hairstyle, or like a bandana. I don't see an oddish in the moonlight. It's just, just not, not a good art style, in my opinion. And there's Erica's Oddish. Erica was my sister's favorite, I think, or maybe Sabrina. I think Sabrina was my sister's favorite gym leader. I like that card. Probably my second least favorite art style. Not bad, but uh, just whatever, I guess. Um, and that leaves us with the 
original, which annoys me. But Vile Bloom is, I don't know, I like Vile Bloom a lot. I think they're pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, Team Rocket. I have the Team Rocket one, and then I have. Let's see what this is. Oh, it's the EX. <laughs> school, I 
I guess. And then Team Rocket Meowth. The one that we've all come to know and love from the show. Decent art style. Arcanine. The 
of this card. I always thought that Arcanine should be a star, not a diamond. But, uh, they did answer that. us to number 60. I officially have the first 60 Pokemon in card form. I thought we'd have more cards than this, and I'm sure they're coming, but Poliwag, don't care for Poliwag, didn't have any interest or uh, opinion of, of this Pokemon. Got two Poliwag.
see, this is what I mean when I, I say the new cards are a bit over the top of too much. Like, this is very subtle. But in my opinion, so much better than everything being super shiny and vibrant. Like, this just does its job and does it well. And it doesn't need to be over the top. Okay. Alakazam was number 65. Number 66 is indeed Machop. I think everyone has Machop somewhere. Decent enough Pokemon. I got no issues with Machop. Um, just not something that really makes your head turn. First edition Team Rocket Machop. That's a bit better, I guess. Um, there's just so many Machops out there in the world. But not a lot to say. Giovanni had Machop, I guess. Not bad. And that leads us to Machoke, who's pretty forgettable. Seems like a decent Pokemon, although this move, Karate Chop, does 50 damage minus 10 damage for each damage counter on Machoke. That's interesting. Yeah, he's okay. He's just the in-between until we get to what we really want, which is, and here's the OG card. This was my first holographic ever. Machamp. First edition. I don't know why they went with Machamp as like their go-to, but maybe they wanted one that was cool enough to get people excited, but they didn't want it to be one of the super heavy hitters because they wanted that one to be hidden in the packs to drive sales, like Charizard and stuff, but Machamp's pretty cool. Japanese Giovanni's Machamp holographic. I like that card, pretty cool. And then I've got this more boring Machamp from whatever set this is. Okay, that's number what number is he? Number sixty-eight. Okay, number sixty-nine. Sprouts, whatever. Don't care too much for Bell Sprout. Um, apparently there are two different Erica's Bell Sprout cards, which is odd. Same print dates, just two different Bell Sprouts. I think I prefer this art style. us to Weepin' Bell. Um, who's fine. Apparently a lot of the plant Pokemon just like to drool, but Weepin' Bell's whatever. Um, Erica's Weepin' Bell. Doesn't seem like the most cognitively present of the Pokemon, but I'm not one to judge, I guess. And that leads us into Victrabelle, who I actually really like. I don't know if this had the opportunity to be holographic. I assume it did. I wish I had it. But I like Victrabelle, for sure. Kind of surprised there aren't any Pokemon, at least not that I can think of, that represent like a Venus flytrap. These are similar. Um, this is a carnivorous plant in the real world. I forget what it's called, but basically the edges of this hole on top of it, the, the lid. 
lip of this bell is very slippery. And so insects that land on it slide into the bell, get stuck in the water, and cannot climb or fly out. So they get digested by this plant. I forget what it's called, but it'd be nice to see a, like a Venus flytrap type animal or type Pokemon. Okay. So that was number 71. Number 72, Tentacool. Now, these two are the same, except this one's holographic, so I'll show this one. Um, yeah, I don't know. Not a lot to say about Tentacool. I do remember the episode of the TV show featured Tentacool and Tentacruel, and it was a pretty good episode back in the day, but Tentacruel is apparently only 5 foot 3 inches, but in that episode of the show, it was like the size of skyscrapers, so I don't understand that, but... Okay. 
destroyed all my hopes and dreams. Still one of my favorite cards, but definitely worthless now. And then there is Sabrina's Slow Bro in Japanese. I like that art style.
the smog monster from Godzilla. If you know what I'm talking about, that's some old stuff there. Um, but he's alright. He's cool. Okay, number 90, Shelter. style I don't care for as much. But the um, next two Pokemon are some of my favorites. Got tons of Haunters, apparently. Love Haunter. Might be my favorite out of the three. But Ghastly evolves into Haunter. And this seems a bit redundant.
not even sure what the original hypno card looks like. I feel like I kind of remember it, but I've never had it. Maybe I'd like hypno more if I ever remembered that card. A lot of my appreciation comes from the original cards and their art. Um, I guess that was where I first interacted with them. Oops. We've got some backwards. Whoa. Number 102. I assume it goes on the other side of this. Let me make sure. Yep. Is it different? Nope. Okay. There we go. So we got Krabby. Krabby's cool. Can't hate on Krabby. between Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan, I would 
I would pick him on Liam, for sure. Um, oh good, I do have a holographic him on Liam. rockets and it's got a rocket badge at the bottom. Alright. And finally we've got just this this generic one which not too much of a fan of it. Okay, 108 Lick a tongue. First edition Lick a tongue. Okay, so number 111. holographic stuff going on here. Not 
sure who that's for, but I guess some people like it. Just a bit over the top for me. I like the more subtle stuff. Okay, and then lastly, a Japanese version of Brock's Ride On. I like it. Okay. Now, I do remember being gifted this card by a friend of mine right at the end of when I was collecting. I think he was stopping too. scratching it every time I do that. Okay, that was number 113. Number 114, Tangela. Another standalone, kind of like far-fetched. It doesn't really do anything or go anywhere. She doesn't evolve from anything, doesn't evolve into anything. But Tangela's cool. Here we go, another Erica's card. version. And then there's Blaine's Genghis Khan, which is just a diamond. It's not a star. And rarity. Okay, that was number 115, number 116. Horsey. Horsey's cool. Got no hate for Horsey. This card too much, but it's right, it fits their horsey personality well. And then there's Cedra, who's one of those forgettable Pokemon, just one of those ones you don't ever really talk about. Got a first edition Cedra here from whatever set this is. Yes, the two creepiest. 
was a hollow version of this card, I think, and I actually thought it looked really cool. I don't have it, unfortunately, but, uh, Mr. Mod. Just a weird, uh, sorry, I keep hitting the camera. Just a weird one, for sure. Nice. But then there's Blaine. 
not sure how many people really ever liked Magmar. I wonder if it's anyone's favorite Pokemon. Okay, Pinsir. I like Pinsir a lot. Number 120, or yeah, 127. Cool card. Liked this card a lot. of Eevee, and that can 
see already. That, there's one of them I don't have, which makes me kind of sad. Um, but there's Vaporeon. My sister's favorite. At least with the original three. I, I think she changed her opinion later on. Um, Vaporeon's cool. Vaporeons. Got dark Vaporeon as well. The Team Rocket one. Um, but then there's Jolteon, who, which was my brother's favorite. And this card here was actually one of his that we were able to save from being lost. I was in possession of it at the time for whatever reason. I can't remember why. But this is his first edition, Jolteon. So he does still have one Pokemon card. Um, I do have a holographic Jolteon as well. Really cool card. I like Jolteon a lot. But I would say my favorite is Flareon. I don't have it because the universe knows that Flareon is my favorite. I never, ever, ever once pulled it. I remember buying a pack of cards for my one of my good friends when I was, you know, super young. And uh, it's a cool Jolteon, by the way. Team Rocket one. I, I assume it's Dark Jolteon. I'm not sure, though. I bought him one pack for his birthday, and yep, it had a Flareon holographic in it. But, uh, I never got one. Okay, so I know I'm missing 136, which is Flareon. I don't know what 131 is, and I don't know what 123 is. So I'm missing three so far. We're almost done. 137 is Porygon. Uh, it's a weird one. This is one of those forgettable ones. I mean, I like Porygon, but I just... It's really hard to connect with Porygon. Um, what I remember about the show is there was an episode that was actually banned. It had to do with Porygon. And it was banned because amount of strobing and flashing lights that was featured in that episode was uh, like dangerous for people. It was causing seizures in viewers, so they actually had to take the episode off the air because it was dangerous to watch it. And I've seen clips of the part that they're talking about, and yeah, it hurts your eyes big time, even when you don't have any susceptibility to, to seizures or triggers. Uh, Sabrina's Porygon, Japanese. It was pretty, it's just tons of flashing lights. I think Pikachu attacks Porygon and they both use flashy moves that create lots of light. Okay, 138, Ammonite. Evolves from a fossil. That's interesting. So, Ammonite. 138. Here's one of those toy ones I mentioned earlier I don't care for. I don't know why they would make these. I don't like the toys. Um, Amonite turns into Amastar. I've got a first edition one here. They're cool. I really like the fossil Pokemon. They, they're interesting. Um, fossils in general are just interesting, so it's cool to see. Including a Japanese one of Mama Star. Okay. Now, Kabuto. I'm missing Kabuto. Or no, I'm not missing Kabuto, sorry. I have Kabuto, there he is. He's cool. First edition. Um. 
but I am missing Kabutops. And I don't, I don't know who these other two are, because this is 140, 141, 142, 143, 144. 143 must be Moltres. I don't have Moltres. This must be uh, Aerodactyl. So Kabutops, Aerodactyl, Moltres. I'm missing those. That's unfortunate. But I do have Articuno. And I actually like all three of the uh, legendary birds equally. I feel like Moltres usually gets shafted. Um, but I think Moltres is just as cool as these two. Relic. 
I'll remind you this is pre-internet in terms of like constant use of internet. So when I saw somebody with this card for the first time, it blew my mind because it just defied all reason with what a Pokemon card was supposed to look like. So Ancient Mew card. Awesome. I don't know why mine's so destroyed, but something happened to it, obviously. And that brings us to the promo card for the movie as well, like the more official one, which is just Mew. Number 151. Very cool. Okay. Well, that brings us to the end of the first 151 Pokemon. We will get into these another time. This is Gen 2. I have a lot fewer of these. I mean, seriously. We're done by the time we get here. Then I've got a bunch of trainer cards and a bunch of stupid energy cards. So, yeah. Um, I was missing a couple. I knew I was missing Dragonite. I knew I was missing Moltres, Aerodactyl, and Kabutops. I don't know. Oh, and Flareon. Oops, that was loud. I don't know who 131 is. And I don't know who 123 is. Um, I feel like I need to look this up.
got quite a bit of them. I just never cared for them as much as these. I forget what they're called. of course.